when did the word cloud cease to just mean the puffs of light in the sky? I don't remember when I first learned of cloud-based services, but today we are all using the cloud in one way or another, and sometimes people are looking for the best storage and backup for their photos. <laughs> to figure out which cloud storage to use for backing up your pictures? Well, join me in this video because I want you to know a few things as you consider what photo storage you should be backing your pictures up with. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt, a photo estate planner and co-founder of Pixology. We are your go-to experts in education and motivation, telling you about the best in photo saving apps, tools, and software. Definitely see the description below for my notes and information and links to help you on the journey of preserving your family photos. So a little background on what is the cloud? Even today, I have clients who come into Pixology that don't understand what the cloud is or does for them. So to put it simply, the cloud refers to all those things that we do online versus on our computer. When people talk about cloud-based services for backing up photos, there's two areas I like to focus on. The first is just basic cloud backup services like Carbonite or Backblaze. When people sign up for this service, they go online to the websites, register, and then they download the company's software to their computer. Then the software starts doing its work of uploading the files from the computer to the company's website, where it is then promptly sent down to the company's data center. Our files aren't being stored literally in the cloud in the air, they're being preserved and saved and backed up in data centers. And often these companies have multiple data centers around the country in case one fails, your information and files are saved in the other locations. When disaster strikes, you can go online, see your files and download them to the new computer that you have to replace the one that died or was stolen or something else terrible happened to it. There are cloud storage sites that are designed specifically for photos and that's where I'm going to focus more of my time here. I do like to think of backing up photos as one piece of the whole digital photo management that needs to be done. And if you need to know more about managing your digital photo collection, click the link above because I have a a video that talks about 20 different ways that you can manage your pictures and backing up is important but there's other things that can be done with your pictures to make them be more enjoyable and tell your family stories for a long time to come. When looking at photo storage sites, I just chose the six I come in contact most often with my clients. And there are factors that I like to look at when talking with my clients about how they are backing their pictures up to the cloud. First of all, people like to know what it's going to cost for them to back up their pictures in the cloud. And in today's day and age, we are most often having a monthly subscription or annual subscription to pay for the storage. The cost is usually between a couple bucks and $10 a month, depending on how much storage you need. The second thing that I like to talk with my clients about is I truly believe you need to be able to have a copy of your pictures on your computer if you're still using a computer. If you don't have access to the internet, you don't have access to your photos with cloud storage, okay? So having a copy on your computer is really important to me. Another factor I really stress with my clients is that you need to know how to sync your phone to your photo backup. All of the options I look at can definitely sync your phone photos to the online backup. What I find more often is people don't turn the features on, so do be sure that you have the app on your phone and it's turned on and uploading the pictures to your cloud backup. Another factor that I like people to be aware of is that it's really nice when your collection that's being backed up in the cloud 
is kept private and there's no data mining. This means companies like Google or Amazon, they aren't well, they are looking at your information. It's in their policies. And when you store photos up there, those companies, these big tech companies, really do get a lot of information about your life. I also stress that you want to be sure your cloud backup is backing the full size version of your photos. Sometimes you might find that your images or videos being compressed to take up less space. Don't skimp on that. Always be sure that your original files are being backed up. Then if you are not using a digital photo management program, you might want to double check that your photo backup has the option to allow you to get prints or make photo books. It's really handy when you have that all in one place. All right, enough about the features of a photo cloud backup. Let's actually talk about the services that are out there. I did not touch on Shutterfly or SmugMug or other websites like that because I don't think photo backup is their primary purpose. For your convenience, I've created a chart where you can compare these programs with each other along with the cost. You can find the download link below in the description. Google Photos, if you are an Android phone user, you most likely are backing your pictures up to Google. Definitely be sure that the backup is turned on. I like the interface for Google Photos, but it does not back your pictures up to your computer. For you iPhone users, your photos are most likely being backed up in iCloud. And if you are an Apple computer user, I'm pretty certain you're using iCloud as well. It works well together in the Apple system, and the storage is, ranges between 99 cents for 50 gigabytes and 299 for 200 gigabytes. Another option that's out there is Amazon Photos, which is free for people who are Amazon Prime members. And you can have an unlimited amount of photos stored in Amazon Photos. If you have video, they charge for storage after the first five gigabytes. Amazon Photos is simple to use. I like the interface, but Amazon like owns everything. They just bought MGM. So I don't know if Amazon's the right solution for pictures when Amazon has so many other priorities that it has to watch out for. Often I'll go to a client's house and their pictures will be backing up to Microsoft OneDrive. Now OneDrive is convenient if you are a subscriber to Microsoft Office 365, you get a terabyte of free storage. What I find is that people don't even realize their pictures are backing up to it and it is a nice feature. However, working with Microsoft for managing your pictures in OneDrive isn't that much fun. Another cloud-based backup for photos that I really hadn't considered being for photos, although people use it all the time, is Dropbox. Using Dropbox to manage pictures, I didn't think was very fun, but I was talking with a photographer who said she swears by Dropbox. So I have it in this as an option. It also has a monthly fee and it's not very fun to work with in my opinion, but I know people are using it. The last option I want to talk about is forever permanent storage. This one's different. The company's sole purpose is to help people preserve their memories and pass those memories on to future generations. So you purchase storage, you don't pay a monthly subscription fee, you buy the amount of storage that you need and you can always add to it. And then the company guarantees to migrate your pictures to the newest technology for your lifetime plus 100 years. I have a link down below for a free 2 gigabyte account and it comes with a $20 coupon so you can try the service out. Pixology is an ambassador for forever so when you click on that link and make a purchase we may receive a commission for it. The most important part about using a cloud-based photo backup solution is using it routinely. And I mean, not just setting it so that it's backing up and you don't think about it anymore. You need to check it at least once a month, make sure it's working like it's supposed to. And it might give you the opportunity to delete some pictures you don't need and free up some of your space. Now, are you wondering what I use? 
Well, I have to tell you I use two of those solutions because a lot of times when managing pictures, one solution doesn't meet all of a person's needs. So I have an iPhone and a MacBook Pro, so iCloud is my go-to photo backup, and I, I like using it a lot. But I also use Forever because I know that I want my collection to be available generations after I'm gone. All right, that is a lot of information. What do you think about these options? Did I miss something? Put a comment below because I might learn something and you might help someone who is trying to make a decision about where to save their photos. That's it for now. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up and we will see you the next time.